Hi everyone, welcome to Ben's Business Podcast. This is number episode number 89. I'm here with Derek Gray, a Paralympic athlete and runner. Uh, he does the the local Kirkcaldy Park Run in under 16 minutes. What's the exact time? 15.24, I think. 15.24. Yeah. So shooting past all of us. <laughs> but uh, I'm just doing a, a live here with Derek. I'm going to ask, ask how he's got to where he is in terms of his running. I'm going to share this across some platforms and make sure we we'll get some live viewers. So if you've got any questions for Derek, please put them in, in the comments and we'll, we'll see them here and we'll answer them for you. Um, let's get this started here as well. So yeah, Derek, would you like to introduce yourself and uh, tell us a wee bit about you? Yeah, um, my name is Derek Gray. I, I'm from Kirkcaldy. I'm 34 years old this month. Um, I suppose probably I can cut to the chase and the reason why or how I ended up in the position I'm in now, um, I was in a very serious motorcycle accident just over nine years ago. Um, I I was out on my motorcycle one evening, middle of June, and I collided with an articulated lorry and ended up in Nine Wells Hospital. Um, a lot of rehabilitation, hard work with the physios, the surgeons, various different operations. And then, yeah, I, I find myself in, in the position I'm in now, which is which is an absolute honour, to be mm-hmm. honest with you, Ben. It's, um, when I sit back and think about it, you've really got to pinch yourself. It um, kind of takes a breath away to, to be living the life I am now, to mm-hmm. have come, came back from what I did. And um, yeah, it's just, life's amazing. Yeah, mm-hmm. brilliant. So, yeah, you, you uh, that was the next question I wanted to ask you is like, how did you bounce back from that? motorcycle accident like you you were doing running before yeah. I, I've, I've read into and that happened you, you we were discussing before this that it wasn't something maybe you were taking as seriously as you are now yeah. and what what changed maybe at that time when you had the motorcycle accident and what got you to bounce back even stronger well since when I was growing up, I've always been into sports, um, played football from a young age, and I've always loved the hard work that went into being a competitor. Um, when I played football, I was never the most gifted ability-wise, but I had the hard work and the drive and the ethic behind that mm-hmm. to make up for what I lost in or in natural talent. I've always been known as a hard worker and someone who likes to train, and even at training sessions, I always wanted to win. Right. Um, and then... Pre-accident, I was I was a competitive club runner. I was a three hours and three marathon runner. But I was com- I was combining as we spoke off air. I was working full time, training football twice a week, playing on a Saturday, and then trying to fit in some runs. Mm-hmm. So runs at the time were just I was going out and I was going hell for leather every single running session. Um, there was no structure to my training. I was just running because I enjoyed it. And the more more I ran, the more I was really realizing how much I was enjoying it, and I was actually quite good at it. Mm. I started to enter some local races, and then eventually gave my football up. And just at the end of two thousand and nine to fully focus on my running, and then yeah, in, in middle of June is when I had my accident. What got me to bounce back was. The, the main reason was like my, my family, my wife at the time was super, super supportive. Allowed me to have down days, but I didn't didn't allow me to feel sorry for myself. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I wanted just to crawl inside my shelf and, and just let the world pass me by at, at that time. I was young, I was only 24 at the time of the accident. Um, my life had just been flipped upside down. Um, I was going through a massive change and I didn't really know what was going on. I didn't really understand it at the time. Um, and yes, a big part of me just wanted. To, I was angry. I was upset. Mm-hmm. I was confused. I was embarrassed. I was full of mixed emotions. And yes, I wanted to just put my head down on the pillow and just wish I would wake up and feel better or be back to being how I was before. And at the beginning, I was expected to make this miraculous recovery. I was going to be a, a slight setback, and I would be back to being who I was before the accident. And when I realised that, then that was when life started to change. Mm-hmm. Um, I started to grow in confidence. Um, I worked really, really well with the physiotherapist at the Victoria Hospital in Kirkcaldy, various different operations. 
But the big turning point was when I, I returned to running. Um, I was a keen runner before my accident, as, mm. as I've told you. And I always used to ask the physios every week, two or three times a week when I was in seeing them, when can I run again? And they would just say, like, you just need to maybe <laughs> settle down a bit and then we'll, we'll build up the strength first and then you'll get a run eventually. And I, I, I kid you not, Ben, the first run I had was maybe five, six metres, the length of the physiotherapy gym, and it's probably the best run I've ever had. Right. Uh, it was it was unbelievable. Um, I had run two marathons before my accident, and that was probably, I had more endorphins going through my body having run only five or six metres. Right. Um, and that was the turning point. It mm. was after then I realised, yeah, there's maybe an old part of me still here mm-hmm. that I thought I would never see again. And from then it's really just grew and grew and I've, I've worked harder and harder and, and relied on, the, on the, the support team. And then now here we are, it's, it's life, life goes it's an amazing journey. And yeah, it's, it's surreal, really, mm-hmm. really surreal. Yeah. Uh, that's an um, an amazing journey that and I I'm, I admire just for bouncing back and coming back even harder than than before with an injury. Yeah. Um, so w- are you are you only injured in your arm or is there any other area that you were injured uh, during that accident? I had a list of injuries at right. the time, okay. um, but the worst of them was what's called the brachial plexus. So that's all the nerves that control the the movement and the working of the the arm and the hand. So the feeling, the sensitivity, um, everything to do with the hand and arm is all from the nerves, the brachial plexus. Well, I totally damaged that. So mm-hmm. I think at best I have, I would say, no more than 20, 25% use of my arm. But I've just learned to, to live with that, Ben. Yeah, and, yeah. And I went a long time without having any use of my arm. Okay. So having gone from that to someone who's now got some use, mm-hmm. it's night and day difference. And yeah. I think the way the human brain works, um, if you, f- you find a way, so we're, we're, um, if it takes me 10 minutes longer than it used to, um, I always find a way of getting around things and you yeah. get a sense of satis- satisfaction from that as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I took a really bad knock to the brain, um, broke most of my ribs, collarbone, shoulder blade, they were all broken and cracked, so mm. um, yeah, I went through the wars. Right. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so... How long did that take to recover in total? I was in a in intensive care. I was in an induced coma for four or five days. Right. And I spent a further five weeks um, in Nine Wells Hospital in a ward. Right. Came home. Um, I spent two years with the physiotherapist. Mm-hmm. Um, basically learning basic skills, building the strength up again. I was bed bound in hospital for a long time, so I had yeah. to learn to walk again in Nine mm-hmm. Wells. And mm-hmm. yeah, I really started from scratch, so... Um, and, and, I, and I keep reflecting back that life goes on an amazing journey at times and there's always lows in life but I'm a great believer in that the lows make the highs higher and to experience yeah. what a high feels like you've got to know what, what the low is yeah. um, and it takes a strong person to do that but mm-hmm. it takes an even stronger team to, to support that person in doing so so I'm very grateful to everybody that, that's helped me along the way yeah yeah, that's, that's amazing so yeah, I totally relate to that idea of the, the lows and like I told, I was telling you about my experience through through hi, uh, high school and primary school, which wasn't structured for me. Mm-hmm. It wasn't a place to support uh, dyslexics and uh, they didn't fully understand and have a structure for uh, dyslexic uh, students. Mm-hmm. So I, I feel like I've also did that, which I've learned is called alchemy, so turning lead into gold. Yeah. So like a really negative experience we always find that people who are really successful have these really negative yeah. experiences that they've, they've uh, transmuted and changed into something they can use as their power, yeah. as, their, as their energy. So it's like this energy that happened from, say, the, 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 the crash um, and my experience in school is what's given us a lot of energy because mm-hmm. I think everyone's capable of, doing, of using that principle of mm-hmm. turn, converting things into laid into gold and, and using negative energy for a positive use mm-hmm. and I feel like that's exactly what you've done with yeah, this yeah, as well yeah. it's, it's really interesting um, so what from all that where you are today just for people who don't know about uh, what you've achieved like from America and, and anyone yeah. else that's watching what have you achieved say in the last the last past two years like what are your major achievements um, well, in the last We'll take the last four-year cycle. Then yeah. 
to date, the biggest achievement for me has to be to represent Great Britain. Uh, yeah. I went to Rio to run the marathon um, for Team GB, which was, <laughs> again, was a massive, massive honour and something I never, ever thought would, would happen. Even two, three, four months before I got selected, I knew when I was in, had a good shot. Um, I ran well London in 2016, so I was well under the qualifying time. Mm-hmm. But I just didn't know if I'd get selected or not. And then, yeah, it's a, a phone call that I'll never forget when my yeah. head coach gave me a call to say that um, I'd been selected. I remember my wife and I, um, I had a voicemail, so I was getting ready to go for a run. Mm-hmm. I'd been waiting on the phone call all day at work. And um, I was walking home from work and my phone went and I thought, this is it, this is the time I'm going to get the news. It was one of my mates. Right. So I just cut him off. I wasn't in any mood for speaking to anyone. Um, went home put my run stuff on, I went to do my Monday session and then my wife came running to the front door and said that my head coach was calling so I missed the call and she left a voicemail um, to say I'd been selected and congratulating yeah. me and stuff and my wife and I were jumping around in the living room like we'd won the lottery <laughs> it was, it was a, a, yeah. a feeling I'll never forget yeah. I went to Rio, uh, again it was a massive learning curve for me um, the race didn't go to plan um, mm. I had to withdraw from the race after 18 and a half miles I went back to similar similar feelings from after my accident. Um, I was embarrassed, I was confused, mm. I was emotional, I was angry. I was, I was filled with so many different emotions. Right. And nothing to be embarrassed about, but in my eyes, I would, I'd failed at something. And like you just said there, I, I went away from, I came away from Rio and I was prepared or I prepared to make the changes for that to not happen again. Mm-hmm. And I turned what was a, one of the neg- most negative experiences of my life to... Um, to not succeed on the biggest stage in, in athletics. And it's the only race I've started and not finished. Um, but I, I turned that negative into a positive yeah. and, and changed my training methods and my attitude and my approach. Mm-hmm. And I feel like I'm a better athlete in person for that. Yeah. Since then, in 2017, um, I came third at the, the IPC, which is the Inter- International Paralympic Committee. Okay. We have a World Cup race um, full of guys with my classification, so the same, same disability as me. They host a World Cup event every year at London Marathon. Right. So 2017, I came third, um, around 233. In 2018, I won the World Cup um, in a slow time of 2.36. Mm-hmm. It was a super, super warm day. Yeah. And then this year, the... The World Championships, which are in Dubai in November for the World Parathletics, they have the marathon at London. Yeah. I think it must be for the heat and stuff. Um, so I ran the, the World Championships in London this year and came second. Mm-hmm. And I've now lowered my PB to 2.27 and 08. Right. So I'm going in the right direction. Yeah. Um, I've just got to keep the head down, mm-hmm. keep working away. And since then, well, this year, um, I've PB'd over... Um, a mile, 5k, 10k, 10 mile, half marathon and marathon. So pretty much every distance I've raced this year, yeah. um, I've PB'd over. Yeah. So yeah, I just got to keep that momentum going, keep keep working hard and Tokyo's only only around the corner really, it's like yeah. 11 months away. Um, yeah, just done 11 months for the marathon in Tokyo, so super super exciting times mm. and it's, it's it really is an honour and a privilege to be to be where I am in yeah. life and, and excuse me to have the opportunities I have it's yeah. it's a joy mm. and now do you does it feel like it's not real sometimes for you and uh, do you really receive what you're what you're achieving as well I want to ask you that like with all this happening and maybe happening quite fast are you do you feel like you have a lot of gratitude and appreciation, like as or, or is there any times where you're just it seems not real? That's a really good question, actually. There's a lot of times yeah. that, that the life that I'm living doesn't mm. feel real. Um, I'll always show gratitude and appreciation to the guys that have helped me. So I'm mm. forever going into the hospital, nine miles or Kirkcaldy. Just to pop in, um, yeah. it's all fine and well reading something online or reading in the local newspaper, but if I can go and see them face to face and they can hear the stories and and see what hard work that they've put in and has, has helped me to get where I am, yeah. and just to go and thank them. Yeah. Thank you goes yeah. a long way in life. But there is a lot of times where I've got to kind of pinch myself right. and, to, and 
to be to be aware of living the life that I live. Mm-hmm. In the running world, my life kind of goes focuses on one race to another. Okay. So I, I, I prepare and train for one race. Mm-hmm. If that's good or bad, it's done. Right. Um, if it's good, you take the positives and you mm-hmm. go all forward from that. If it's bad, then I sit down with the support team and we usually dissect it, see where it went okay. wrong and how we can move on mm-hmm. and for that to not happen again in the future. But luckily, touch wood, poor performances are few and far between. So okay. yeah. um, in life, if you if you fail to prepare, you're preparing to fail. Mm-hmm. Um, and I work exceptionally hard. So mm-hmm. I put not just myself, myself, my wife, and we put a lot into, we've committed a lot into this running. Mm-hmm. Um, and I put my heart and soul into it. So um, yeah, it's, it's really paying off at the minute. Yeah. yeah. Good. So yeah. no, that's that's quite a good question actually. Yeah. 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 Something yeah. I never think of because it's yeah. You get it's like in business you get if you focus on one target you get that target and mm-hmm. then you straight away you focus on the next. Yeah. Um, and it's not until you take a step back outside the box and look and think, mm-hmm. man, I've that's went quite far oh, and yeah. I didn't really appreciate that or so. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's that's just life, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. As high achievers, which is both of us, <laughs> it's. I see, here's my dog barking. Um, high achievers, we, I find that is a big problem for, for me and other high achievers is we, we do, we, we, we achieve this big massive goal that we've always wanted to achieve in our life and then we go, what's next? Yeah. And uh, I just wanted to ask you if, uh, if, you're, if you're truly receiving that and, and if you've had any problems come over, um, overcoming that yeah. lack, uh, inability to receive mm. what we've really achieved and uh, it's been something that I've been working on myself more recently this year on uh, just taking the, the moment to, to appreciate yeah. and, and allow myself to be a wee bit complacent yeah. for a small bit of time and to then move on. And it's it's been a really... It's made me really feel like I've achieved them yeah. and that's given me that drive to go to the next level even more, taking that time to, mm. to go, okay, I've achieved this and then move on. I suppose my views on that would be just take London Marathon, for instance, has been mm. was the best race I've ran, best marathon, best performance. The, the okay. overall experience was the, the best race I've ever ran. Mm-hmm. I didn't really reflect on it because you're only as good as your last race in this game. Yeah. Um, yeah. And if I was to then dwell on what happened in London, you would always hang on that. Um, yeah. I, I wanted to just to focus on, well, that's done, mm-hmm. that's banked. Um, I'm never going to forget how I ran in London. But we then move on to the next one. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I tend to not over evaluate or overthink things, okay. good or bad. Mm-hmm. Um, I tend to just kind of move on and keep yeah. myself focused. Yeah. And, and even when, when there's not a target, I don't often have targets doing what I'm doing now. But if, if there is a, some downtime and I'm still focusing on, on, yeah. on yeah. where I want to go and, mm-hmm. and where I am now and you're probably similar as well mm-hmm. you have an end goal which is the big goal yeah. you have stepping stones to get to that Yeah. so the last London Marathons and the races this year are all stepping stones mm-hmm. to the big one which is which is next September yeah. so that doesn't matter what happens in between that's always where I want to get that's to and goal, that, yeah. that, that that's the main focus ok uh, yeah. so the, these uh, runs like Kirkcaldy Half Marathon um, when you went to Japan as yeah. well th- these are all Getting you ready for yeah. this big one, yeah. bigger one, yeah. Even small runs, small races like the park run, yeah. Um, they all go towards a bigger picture. Mm-hmm. Um, they're all character building. They're all if they can take you outside your comfort zone for that 15, 20 minutes. Yeah. Not that I, I do the park run every week, but I go down most, as you know, most yeah. weeks. Yeah. Um, but even going down and and helping and supporting others gives me a lot of satisfaction and I take a lot of pride and joy from that. Yeah. Almost just as much as my own performances actually. Mm, yeah. Um there's nothing more to me, the running community is is super, super special and mm. there's very little things like it out there, I believe. Um super supportive and you can run for twenty minutes and you and your competitor can knock lumps out of each other. <laughs> when you cross that finish line you're full of elation and yeah. endorphins and you give each other a hug and yeah. That's, there's, there can't be many sports like that, and that, that's the beauty of running, mm. so it gives me a lot of joy um, not doing what I'm doing or being where I am, but just, just to be a runner. Yeah, mm. 
No, I, I love that as you're talking about the the end into a, a, a race that you've maybe had with someone, and then it's like nothing but love yeah. for each other at the end. It's not yeah. it's not like that really uh, hard competition you might get in other sports yeah. or or business. Um, it's it is it's everyone supporting each other. There's lots of positivity yeah. and just I always com- uh, want to invite people to go to the park yeah. just from my experiences. It's a great way to raise your vibration and and just feel more positive yeah, yeah, yeah. after doing it. Even like you're saying, come going up and supporting others yeah. running, like the Kokodi half half marathon. I didn't run in that, but it was a good feeling to not participate for once and actually just uh, yeah. be part of it. So yeah, I totally but agree. I've taken you in the park run, and mm-hmm. um, I wouldn't like to say you were suffering, but you worked hard. <laughs> but you're probably going in that park run thinking. I can't keep doing this. Yeah. There's no way I can keep running at this pace. Yeah. If you've got someone that's that's there just helping you along mm-hmm. um, and you do all the hard, hard work on the day, yeah. um, all I do is just kind of help and support and encourage. Mm-hmm. And then when you get you cross the finish line and you look at your time and think, I could have run a few seconds faster. I always. And the same can be said for the, the business world. You, you, yeah. you never think you're going to get to that, that end goal or that target mm-hmm. and when you get there, how did that happen? Mm. What happened because you've, you've deserved it, you've earned it. And then you're straight away you're looking at, well, I'm here. Mm-hmm. Where's the next one? Yeah. And, and that, that's that's the beauty of being like um, yeah. enthusiastic and committed and, and driven and dedicated. Mm-hmm. Isn't it? Yeah. And it, and it all can be taken back to the to the business world as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, that... and not just running or, or business, but life, mm-hmm. life in general. Exactly. The, all the lessons that, like I'm very observant of success and failure and, uh, and everything in sports so uh, by having that mindset of trying to act like looking at the reasons for everything happening uh, from an analytical point of view I'm always looking at myself and how I act and how my mindset's going in the middle of a run and there's so much you can see like you learn so much about life from running yeah. and how you act and behave in your mind and in and, and the performance and how you, there's always another level you can go to and when you get these new personal bests, I got four in a row mm-hmm. uh, at the park runs. I went around all the park runs and I, I kept, I had this momentum mm-hmm. and that happens in business as well mm-hmm. where you get a, a sale after a sale mm-hmm. after a sale or a big deal after a big deal. And they, they are very much similar, just different categories of life. So you can pull lessons from business over to running and you can do the opposite way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's really interesting. I think that's one of my big passions about why I like running yeah. so much because I'm using the two of them to, I, I, I can take something, a lesson from running and apply it to business. But on, on the flip side of that, you, you can also do four or five weekends in a row and go slower and slower yeah. and slower. And you can then take that over to the business side and you can lose a sale, you can lose a client, you can, yeah. you can lose shares or anything. Mm-hmm. And it's, this can't be just related in running it, it's, it can be related in any hobby or people can go to the gym or yeah. go for a cycle or, yeah. or lots of different things. So um, I suppose it's just a bit of being, being active and mm-hmm. um, yeah, it, re- it releases a lot of stress and I think you get to see your true colours. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah. it. <laughs> and like you said, when you took me around the, the Kirkcaldy, the Beverage Park, there was a point where you mentioned it to me that I got a bit excited mm-hmm. on the hill. Like I thought I was going to mm-hmm. get like my, my very best time and I did. Because you had actually told me about a good while ago, this was before I was pacing, mm-hmm. you were teaching me a wee bit about pacing. And I just thought I was burning myself out before the last lap. Yeah. But like you're saying, having you shouting at me literally <laughs> when I was encouraging. falling behind. <laughs> encouraging, yeah, we'll call it that. Uh, but it was encouraging and... Uh, it helped me out in my own mind because yeah. you get trapped in your mind to think I can't do this, and you have it is an indi- individual sport, but having that just helps you push to a new level. Yeah. Every so often, it's good to have a coach in anything, and realize how far you can go with that extra support. So I got to the, that hill and I, I was I pushed my legs a wee bit too fast and I, I almost never made it through the finish line, yeah. but I got there in the end. So we we have these ups and downs yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, over excitement uh, or low self esteem all the time and it's ha- the same ha- all those emotions happen in, in just one race like a 5k yeah. I think it's 
as well when you're getting to a point where it's becoming difficult and you think I can't go on anymore Aye. you've got that doubt in your brain or in your head telling you well this is the end you've come to the end of the line so you may as well just stop if you've then got someone saying well mm-hmm. yeah. we're, on, we're halfway there mm-hmm. we've got one more hit to go or, or whatever just keep keep doing what you're doing Yeah, you're starting to answer to that person and to forget what the brain's saying Yeah, and then before you know it you've overridden what's You've, you've battled against what your brain's telling mm. you and you're at the finish line. Yeah. Um, and all because someone has tempted you along to say, well, just just keep doing what you're doing. Yeah. Um, don't need to go any faster mm-hmm. if you're working as hard as you can and, and try and maintain that. Yeah. And again, that can be taken to, to lots of different things in life, not just running or, mm-hmm. or business, but, yeah. but anything. Um, yeah. I suppose that that's what makes life kind of unique and makes the world go around, doesn't it? Exactly. There's... There's resistance lines like there is in, in stocks and shares, and there's the same with uh, I've learned in, in with personal best. When you go through that resistance line and get a new personal best, that old uh, resistance line is your new normal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then yeah, you yeah. get yeah. you get further and yeah. further, and you you almost can't go below that new uh, foundation you yeah. built, which is really I found that really interesting yeah. about getting personal bests and. Like you're saying, I, I, I compare it to different areas of life all yeah. the time and that's what I really find a lot of enjoyment yeah, in yeah, running. Yeah. I don't overthink when I'm when I'm actually running, but I think I reflect when I reflect on it, I, I quite enjoy that side of it as well. Um, I've got some questions I asked some people to submit in, so okay. I'll go get, a, get through a few of them. So one of the questions I have is, which I think you've answered, that you've always been involved in running. So it wasn't a type, like, for me, I started running just a year ago. Okay. I, did, I started doing park runs. Yeah. I've played football my whole life, and I've kept fit my whole life, and I got a, a, a quite a good time on my first park run. And I wanted to ask you, like, where, uh, when you first did a, a run, like a 5K, where did you start, and... Now you're at 15, 15 and a half. Mm-hmm. Uh, what, when you first did your proper 5k uh, competitive race or run, where did you start? Like, what time did you start, and how much time have you cut off since then? Um, oh, my first, first competitive race was uh, 10k in Creef, okay. yeah, uh, an off road undulating 10k. Um, luckily I had been training quite I was, I went in really fit okay. off, of, off playing football I was okay. still playing football at the time mm-hmm. um, I really couldn't tell you the time okay. um, I finished quite well up in the field maybe mm-hmm. top 10 okay yeah but then I went back to the race that was in 2008 maybe okay. 2008 or 9 okay no, 2009 or in the marathons must have been 2008 I went back in 2014 in one race. Okay. So, um, so in, well, to take the marathon, for instance, pre-accident I was 3.03, and then post-accident I'm, I'm 2.27. I'm sure my half marathon PB pre-accident was like a 79 minutes, so never 19. Yeah. And I now run low 68 minutes. Right. So that's almost, that's 19 minutes off, off a, is that 19 minutes? Of your no, ten minutes, sorry. Yeah. Um, I ran seventy nine, I'm now sixty eight. Mm-hmm. Um which is still a fair chunk. Mm-hmm. So I, I, I think I've always went into races and I still do yeah. now with the, the attitude and the, the approach that this is this is the most important race in the world. So mm-hmm. if it's a part run or if it's a international race, mm-hmm. I always treat the races the same. Okay. And this this race is the most important race in my life. Right. And I always go into the race focused and mm-hmm. in the zone and mm-hmm. I'm like a different person pre and post race. I would go to race and luckily my wife and that, they all know how to deal with me now. Um, no one really speaks to me because yeah, I don't, I don't yeah. talk. And then coming home, you can't, I, I can't stop talking. So uh, it's <laughs> night and day difference, yeah. really, really is. Um, but no, I would struggle to be able to tell you 5Ks I only really started doing when, when I was becoming competitive. Okay. And even now, a 5k is far too short for me it's it's a mm-hmm. burn up really right. uh, okay. yeah yeah because it was just uh, it was when i realized how how fast you got around the 5k i realized how good you were yeah, yeah. and 
when I, I look at my, my time and realise like I've not really worked that hard on, on, on my running until more so the sort of past two two months and I was I just joined Park Run as a as a sort of hobby. Yeah. And people were telling me that my times were good and it was good to it was good to hear that. So I started to think of taking it a wee bit more seriously yeah. and that's when I started to to see what the fastest people were doing and like end yeah. up getting you on onto this. Uh, so it's just interesting to, uh, to see minutes come off of people's times mm -hmm. and how, how do you do that? Um, so the, the other question is, it was actually from Paul Woods and uh, Glenn Barkley who also do park running yeah. and a bit of running. And they asked uh, this similar question, like, uh, nutrition mm -hmm. so what what would you say what have you eaten today um, what do you eat when you're you're racing yeah and yeah what do you eat on an average day when you're there's maybe not a race coming up mm -hmm. uh, and what do you eat pr uh, prior to a, 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 an important race um, and do you have cheat days that was the other question <laughs> the, I have through Sports Scotland I have my like a more nutritionist mm -hmm. so Often they, they ask me to fill up a, a seven day food diary. Today, um, since the really bad knock on the head, um, I probably suffer some OCD now. So I'm really, really repetitive and I love I love repetition. Mm -hmm. So I eat the same thing pretty much day in, day okay. out. Um, so the breakfast is the same every day. It's porridge with nuts and dried fruit mm -hmm. and a glass of fresh orange juice and usually an Actimel. Um because I've, I've got low iron stores because your iron levels are reduced when your body's recovering all the time. Okay. So I've then got to try and I take on iron supplements as well three okay. times a day. For my lunch, um, I made a beef chilli on Monday night. Mm -hmm. So I had that for lunch today with some basmati rice. And then for dinner tonight, we are having... Uh, we're having... What we're having now? I'm on the spot here. <laughs> um, I actually know because I'm making it. Um, yeah, uh, my brain works the same way. I, d I don't. Yeah. I don't think ahead. Oh, it's went in my head now. I know tomorrow night we're going to have chicken fajitas. Mm -hmm. So a Thursday night is usually a, a Thursday is usually a big training session. So mm -hmm. chicken fajitas can be. I I view them as like a cheat kind of meal. Okay. Um, one of my most favourite meals to enjoy is, is fajitas. Pre big race or pre any race, mm -hmm. I always have the night before the race. I make I make my own spaghetti. I make my own pasta. Sorry, okay. own pasta sauce. Mm -hmm. um, use the peppers, onion, mushrooms, courgette, and uh, smoked sausage. Okay. Um, again, I'm, it's always always work for me. Yep. Three hours before race, I have okay. two. If the race is at night or in the morning, I have two quite big pancakes with butter and jam. Okay. Um, and then usually going to the race, I'll have a banana as well. Um, mm -hmm. I always keep drinking electrolyte with caffeine. Okay. And then 15 minutes before the race starts, I'll, I'll take Pro, Pro Plus tablets. Okay. I don't drink tea or coffee, so okay. uh, the caffeine has quite a big effect on me. Right. Um, I've seen myself taking tablets to Pro Plus in the afternoon and I still can't sleep at night right I think it's just the endorphins and the excitement from the race mm -hmm. um, and then post race one of the things I'll, I enjoy the most is a cold kind of coke or diet coke right okay um, so again a, a coke can be can be a cheat for me yeah uh, I don't drink alcohol um, mm -hmm. I have a real sweet tooth right but I tend to stay away from sweets um, but when I have them I do enjoy them yeah but every year after after London Marathon I always say to my wife that I'll have a week or two weeks off. Okay. And I'll... Just completely binge. <laughs> yeah, well, I'll, I'll still keep running, but I'll, right, okay. I'm going to have a week off, like, me, nutritional side, take myself from yeah, being an yeah. athlete and, and go back into the guy who used to eat anything when he wanted and, yeah. and how he wanted. Okay. That lasts a day or two, Ben. And okay. I'm, I'm, because I'm so regimented in what, how I eat, mm -hmm. um, I, I tend to go back to yeah. my old ways and... It's just what I know. Mm. Um, but you, you start to feel you feel better. So why why would you eat yeah, the other foods yeah. that make you not feel as good as well? That's what I see. It yeah. As. Um, I, I I would usually have like a week or I don't drink diet coke or, or or fizzy juice. I only drink them at the weekends. Okay. So I tend to have a week or two weeks post marathon of 
drinking juice when I want it, but that's yeah. the only thing I do. I, I'm okay. back to eating porridge and right. and like chicken or ham salad rolls for lunch or pasta. Yeah. I tend to, what I make for for um, the evening meals. I tend to make more, so it does for my lunch. Right. But again, I eat a lot of um, red meat bolognese for um, for your red for your iron. Okay. Um, a lot of fish, pasta, chicken, mm-hmm. um, things you would expect expect to eat. Right. Um, okay. But I, I love my food. I love my grub. Yeah. Um, okay. I can never eat enough. Really. Yeah. yeah. So no Domino's, no McDonald's. No, I've not been at uh, McDonald's for for years and yeah, years. Cool. Um, yeah. When I have a pizza, I yeah. lo- that's one of my favourite foods. <laughs> I love a pizza. Yeah. Uh, I, again, I will have that on a. Is that rare as well? A Friday or a Saturday night. Okay. Um, maybe once or twice every couple of months. Mm-hmm. So not okay. not all that often, but when I don't overindulge in it, when I mm-hmm. do have it, it's, it's the bee's knees yeah. because it's something yeah, I've wanted to have for a long, long. Right. It's something I've thought about for a long time, mm-hmm. and yeah. when you do have it, it's. It tastes even better. Yeah. Better than winning a marathon. Depends on marathon. So you said three hours before a race you'll, you'll eat. Mm-hmm. Uh, is that usually like, say, for a 10k or... Uh, any. Okay. Yeah, so fine. Three hours. Uh, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't eat any later than three hours before Nothing a heavy, no. Okay. So um, even if I do like a three or five k race on the track... Okay. I'll still eat three hours before. Okay. Um, it's just what I've gotten used to. Yeah. And it's the the um, I say I like repetition, so mm-hmm. yeah. If it's not broken in life you don't fix it. Yeah. So um before long runs on a Sunday, I get up three hours before I go out, have some food, I gain a couple of pancakes and I go back to bed for a couple of hours. Right. Um but anything after the um, the pancakes will maybe just be a banana or a protein bar or something mm-hmm. Light that's the the body's going to easily digest. Yeah, I'm lucky. I've got a cast iron stomach, so um, I don't waste food by bringing it up. So um, yeah, yeah, I usually keep it all down quite well. Okay, yeah, mm. yeah. Um, would you recommend running on like an empty stomach for maybe six hours? Like you've not eaten for six hours and you're doing a, a run. Yeah, well, I run fasted. Right. Okay. Because um, uh, in the morning, I, I wouldn't run any more than seven eight miles fasted okay and that's like the evening before um i've had dinner and i usually have like a bowl of fruit at okay. nine o'clock okay um quite a big bowl of fruit and a banana okay sometimes a yogurt some most often not mm-hmm. um and if i know if i'm running bigger the next morning i'll maybe have a couple of chocolate digestives right um but yeah i, I run fasted most mornings well every morning i run but just six mornings a week um, okay I do a, a session on a Monday morning, a big fat leg session. That's the only that on a Sunday because Sunday's long run. I get right. up and have breakfast before that, and for I do the this, longer ones. I do right. the same for for Monday because Sundays could be anything. Well, if I'm marathon training, it's it's three hours, so it could be anything up to 28, 29 miles. Right. And on a Monday, uh, it's a big fat leg session, so it's warm up session, cool downs, fourteen and a half, fifteen miles. Right. So I never do that fasted. Okay. Um, yeah. I always get up and fuel for that. Yeah. Okay. But everything else I do if it's. Have you ever ran something like that without? Yeah. Without food. I used yeah. To, I used to. Okay. I used to do my marathon training right. fasted. So okay. I'd go and run, twenty four, twenty five miles. Mm. And I'd go home like a broken man. Okay. I'd be white and yeah. shaking and. Right. Um, it's not good for you. Okay. Um, it wasn't until I got told the the dangers of that, um, by my nutritionist or okay. a nutritionist a few years ago. But now, um, yeah, I get my skin, what's called your skin fold. So you've got eight points in your body that they take them. I think it's called the subcutaneous fat, so the fat in between the tissue. Mm-hmm. Then that gets measured every eight to ten weeks. Right. So there's really no hiding. Um, okay. My body weight stays roughly the same. Okay. Um, I've went quite lean, mm-hmm. but I've I found it's been detrimental to my recovery. Okay. So I, my my weight's kind of a, a good balance now, and, okay. and when I go away on camp, I usually come home a good bit lighter. But that can be fluids as well as okay as body fat. So okay, yeah. Um, it's kind of like a balance in that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And the, like a quick other question about fluids, uh, like uh, is water the best, or uh, does any fluids like drink uh, affect your running? And how much water should you drink, etc.? That's the thing, that, that's the beauty of what we do is what you drink when you're just take a marathon for instance, yeah. um, 
we have water stations every 5k and every water station I have has electrolyte so it's okay. like um, your body loses electrolytes when it sweats okay at London Marathon in between the water stations there's between the feed stations sorry there's water stations so you can pick up water when you, when you want it or need it then I couldn't advise someone to say you're better to take water and you're better to take electrolytes so it depends what your body can handle okay and when you're running, you would drink what you think is necessary. Mm -hmm. um, you may be able to take on 400 mils of fluid, but I can only take on maybe say 150. Okay. Um, until you feel full, um, if it's a warm marathon, you're better, better to try and take on as much as you possibly can handle mm -hmm. before you start to feel bloated. Right, um, okay. Because it starts, obviously if you're running it, it's swishing around in your stomach and can cause upset. Um, but the the balance I've got with my nutrition with my electrolytes I've played around with a few different brands and the ones I use now are yeah they're probably the best ones I've tried and for flavour and texture and whole th the whole thing is the uh, the agree with my body but it's the main thing okay yeah yeah okay right so yeah, that's, that's interesting do you think that for, like I, I'm only really doing five k's I'm planning on doing marathons and things in the future um, you've committed now. I've committed yeah, now, yeah, yeah. live. <laughs> so I've set a goal to do a marathon, a half marathon, 10K, and some trail runs. Uh, I've only really been doing 5K, and I've only just started taking running a wee bit more seriously. So for a 5K, is it necessary to carry water around with you or a 10K to take water with you, to drink? Well, I've seen a lot of runners with yeah, bottles. Yeah. Is that important? Again, it would depend on, on what you feel is necessary yeah. and how, how comfortable you are to run without it. The only thing I would advise, if, if you've run, like there's a guy that I've run around the park run a few times, he used to run with a bottle, okay. but he never used to drink it. So the, right. the bottle was with him and he would take a drink at the end. And I said, well, I was going to save you carrying that bottle if you don't carry it when you're running and leave it at the end mm -hmm. and he never thought of that and he never runs it <laughs> right. without it or, or yeah. puts a belt on so he doesn't carry the bottle um, if you're a runner that's run with a bottle and you you become comfortable with that then maybe have someone that's going to be there supporting you that can give you the bottle if you need it Okay. but trying to do it or have someone run with you that's got a bottle in case you need it but mm -hmm. again I couldn't say you do or you don't it's what you feel what you're happy with yeah. and what makes puts you at ease. Mm -hmm. If you can then go without a bottle and, and be uptight, okay. think this is going to go wrong and um, the race might not work out to plan. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it's worth trying these things and the best time to try it is training runs yeah. um, because there's no pressure there. If it, if it does go wrong, then you know you can take that into a race environment. Yeah, okay. Um, the other thing that's could be inter interesting to hear as well as the you know, see that you've got um, your sponsoring mm -hmm. companies and what opportunities come along now that you've reached uh, where you are and running what opportunities have you attracted such as I've seen you like you're speaking in school you've got the sponsors and what other opportunities like for fellow runners that are starting to take it yeah. seriously and want to become athletes what opportunities are there for for those people Doing doing the school visits has only been about going out and and trying to inspire the next generation. Yeah. So not just from a like a, a running concept, but just for life in general to let young people know that life doesn't always go to plan. Things are going to go wrong in life at some point. Mm -hmm. It may be bad, it may be serious, or it may be just quite quite a minor thing, a minor setback. But to let them know that it's okay for things to go wrong in life because. I had a really bad experience when I came off my, my bike that night. Mm -hmm. Probably the worst day of my life. But it's a moment I would, I would never go back to that time and turn back the hands of time and change that. Because mm -hmm. um, it's really benefited me as a person and it's given me the life I've now got. Mm -hmm. And to let the young ones know that it's, it's actually okay in life for things to go wrong. You, you learn, as we've said, you learn a lot from it. Mm -hmm. And now I'm, I'm in the position now I'm, I've been... I'm super lucky to get some some sponsorship, so I get it locally through through Taxi Central, um, Kev Wallace Joinery, mm -hmm. and then Metal Coffee, mm -hmm. and then a, a more national brand is Central Car Options. They they support me as well, so the help that these guys give me has been hugely beneficial to okay. 
to the running and also to my preparation for big races, it's like allowing me to go away more often and mm-hmm. and not worry as much about income. Okay. Um, I'm lucky as well. I'm, I'm supported through UK Sport, so I'm a funded athlete through them. So mm-hmm. I have some form of income, but this running game uh, isn't cheap. Um, so yeah, I want like one of the companies they cover all my nutrition, so my all my protein and, mm-hmm. and all that stuff is, is covered by Metal Coffee. And um, so yeah, I'm I'm forever grateful, and I tend to go into the offices a lot and just just to catch up with the guys. And, right. Just to thank them. Mm, um, yeah. They don't need to do what they do, but it, it really does help, and yeah. I am really grateful for yeah. it. Uh, that's really interesting. So, that's you're you're a full time runner. You don't you don't work. You don't have no, a full time job or yeah. anything. Yeah, that's that's quite amazing. And that was a a, a big change as well. Was I, I was working full time after my accident. I didn't work for a year and a half. Mm-hmm. So to trade, I was a joiner. Okay. And um, working on building sites and stuff. Mm-hmm. And obviously after the accident, I couldn't do that anymore. Um, I worked in a local car garage, just doing the odds and sods, or bits and bobs. Mm-hmm. Um, people don't understand what odds and sods is. <laughs> the, the whole world is yeah. a bit, yeah, um, papers, yeah. So just doing the odd job, and then I took unpaid leave to prepare to go to Rio, and then I came back to work for a month, and then my wife and I, we thought, I've got one opportunity of this, and it's not going to last forever. Um, so we threw the kitchen sink at it and I've been tuning it full time now since November 2016. And yeah, the way the run is going, performances, mm-hmm. preparation, recovery, it's just all, all going to plan and that, that's probably because I now train full time. So yeah. I'm in the gym twice a week. Okay. So I don't have to do things around work. I'm going to the gym and, and training is my work. So, and it gives me the, again, the freedom to come and do things like this today mm-hmm. and to go to do school visits and, and yeah, to try and try and inspire people to to be who they want to be, and I tend to say it to a lot of the kids, it's not. I'm not here to just encourage you to become a runner. If you want to be a builder or mm. a teacher or a nurse or or, or anything, mm-hmm. there, there's only one person in life that can stop you, and that's you. Um, and it's easy to let people dictate what we do, and you're never going to do that. Oh, maybe right there, so I'll maybe look at doing something else. Um, you can we can do any we can be anything in life. Um, mm. You've just got to believe in yourself, and and when others believe in you, then that that's even more powerful. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. That's really inspiring, and I've seen your contrib- contribution back to the community as well. And come like you're saying, you come into the yeah. park runs, and uh, as like a very successful runner yourself, you uh, you also are very humble mm. in that as well because you come to the park run and you you. You, you finish your race and you go back down yeah. the track I've seen you going back yeah. and, and encouraging other people to get their, yeah. their best time and uh, it's, it's really inspiring to see um, it's inspired me mm. personally because you've achieved something really really high and you're you're given that um, you're, you're being a good sort of beacon for mm. other people to see what you've achieved and you're still very um supportive around everyone you're trying to bring everyone up with you rather than just going yeah. through it yourself you're you're doing a really good thing for the community yeah. all the runners and letting them see what's possible if they really yeah. challenge themselves and go and for I, it i appreciate those kind words um i wouldn't for a minute be in in the position i'm in if people didn't help me yeah so for me to give back not to them individually but I'm sure it'll make them happy that I'm 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 giving back as much as I can. Um, this sport has kept me humble, and I'll mm-hmm. I'll forever be humble. Um, I wouldn't be where I am if it wasn't for the sport I, I'm in. Mm-hmm. And if I can give as much back to that, and uh, to me it doesn't matter about pacing or ability or, or anything. If you've got the willpower and, and the determination, then that that can overcome anything. Yeah. Um, and that that as I say, it gives me just as much joy. Um, from my own performances, as it when I see someone else achieving a, a PB by mm-hmm. a second or mm. however long, the however quick they look and the happiness and yeah. in their face, that just it makes it all worth doing. Yeah. So I then go back and haul someone else in. <laughs> <laughs> the next victim. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but okay. we'll have most of the time we ask for it, so it's self inflicted, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> that's true. I, I'm sure. Um, I felt a wee bit uh, like I, I was. It was premature for me when I went round with you. Yeah. Uh, but 
it was, are you, are you up for it, Ben? And I says, let's go then. <laughs> so, so you said it was premature, is that you saying you want to do it again? Ah, yeah, okay, we, okay. we probably but should, yeah. <laughs> again, again, you've committed. <laughs> yeah, live. Uh, let's see, so, no Domino Pizza, as someone's saying. No. <laughs> and he's got crying, crying face emojis there. Um, how has running affected other areas of your life? The biggest one, again, that's a, that's a really good question. The mm. biggest one has been now the amount of time away from my wife. Okay. So I'm going on a training camp for four weeks in November mm. on my own. Yeah. And um, I'm just Spain, so my wife will come out for the last last week, so she'll get a holiday, so we'll get some time together. I'm going away again um, to out to Kenya for a month. I'm, I'm going away over Christmas and New Year, so um, when Susan's at home mm-hmm. with her family, I'll be in a training camp in Kenya, right. um, and for the first 10 days I'm going to be alone. Mm-hmm. Um, but when I say alone, I know guys in the camp from previous years, but that's that's the toughest part, is being right. away from, from my, my wife. Mm-hmm. Luckily, we've got FaceTime, WhatsApp, so we do keep in touch every day, yeah. video call every day, and if it wasn't for that, I think it would be a, a whole lot tougher. Yeah. But to, to know it, it comes with the job, it comes with the territory. Mm-hmm. You've probably been a, away from on training courses, away from yep. your partner, yep. your your kid, your mm-hmm. dog, mm-hmm. Um, and it all adds that mental toughness. And in this game, I, I think what fifty sixty percent of it's physical, the rest of it's psychological. Mm-hmm. So when you get to the last ten k of a marathon, yep. um, you have to, they say that the race starts at twenty miles. Right. If you if when I'm away on my own now, I tend to think about things a lot. Think about the race. Think about when it's going to start to hurt. And when you're racing, you're aware of and you realise how much you've committed to that. Mm-hmm. And being away from from my wife is a, is a massive commitment for us both. Um, and it's easier for me because I'm away from home. I'm in the sunshine. Um, usually when Susan's here, it's November, December, January. Right. Cold, dark, mm-hmm. long months. She's got the house to keep on on top of herself, um, food to cook, mm-hmm. come back to a cold house, um, and just misses that company. So yeah, the, the hardest thing has been away, being yeah. away from family. Yeah. 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 And what about positively? Um, how has running affected your life as well? In a positive way. <laughs> I'm sure we've kind of talked about yeah, that. Yeah. Um, I think it's allowed me to to realise that good things can come from from like a, a low makes a high high um, mm-hmm. I've become a lot stronger physically and the mental toughness I've got now is is way beyond where I ever thought I would be okay um, I'm a lot more positive person than I've ever been before mm-hmm. um, don't get me wrong we still have days where you you can be frustrated and annoyed but there's always a a silver lining behind a dark cloud mm-hmm. Um and it's taken me some amazing places in the world and I've met some phenomenal people. Um, and even coming and doing things like, like this today mm-hmm. is something I never ever thought I would do or, or be able to do or, or have the opportunity to do. So the fact that, that, that these opportunities come along just by putting one foot in front of the other, and that's all I do, <laughs> put the left in front of the right and yeah. the right in front of the left. Pretty fast. Yeah, <laughs> and, and, and a few thousand times, but... That just really just sums it up and yeah, um, yeah it's given me a, an amazing life and mm-hmm. it's something I'm, I'll, f- I'll forever be grateful for. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that's really... And that's I want want people to hear that as well because uh, you've created a really good lifestyle for yeah, yourself yeah, and yeah. you've got a lot of choices and time and like you're saying, being able to do this, I've created this for myself to be able yeah. to do this as well. This is my, my passion project, mm-hmm. let's say. I have a business in between that. But this is this is a thing mm. for me as well. So it's it's inspiring to see you doing yeah. your thing. And you said something earlier that I wanted to like come back to that it, it's like winning the lottery. It was like winning the lottery when you won the race or when you had that first. Uh, I think you said your first run after your, yeah, yeah, your yeah, accident. Yeah. And for people watching, it's like we all have our own our own winning of the lottery feeling. Mm, mm. It doesn't have to be money. No, no, no. Like you're saying, and it could be something like. Um, I don't know, you you could be on a weight loss program and you've got a target weight of to get to fifteen kilogram um, to lose fifteen kilograms or maybe that's a bit heavy. Um 
you can get a target weight of mm-hmm. to make to 15 stone yeah and you get to that and it, your work could be made because exactly. you, you've worked you've committed hard for the last two three years mm-hmm. to, to make that target weight and it's lots of the things in life um, and business and and then athletics it, it's we all have goals and when you get to that goal then there's nothing really can compare to the feeling that you get as as I always say if you if you can bottle up the endorphins you re- that release or the, the feel good factor you get from after a race yeah. and if you were able to sell that you would be a multi <laughs> Yeah, I, I get what you, what you, you mean. Really yeah. Wouldn't. I know guys who have um one guy in particular who's a really good boxer, won a lot of a lot of big bouts. He ran um I think the Edmund Marathon and he said never has he felt a feeling of elation like okay. he'd felt after the marathon because mm-hmm. you're surrounded by like like minded people mm-hmm. who've slogged their guts out for four hours, three, four hours getting around that marathon course. Mm-hmm. And you, you can't help but you usually shed a tear. And I've, I've known guys yeah, who yeah. are not emotional in the slightest, mm. but they just can't help but get upset because it's not just the race, but it's the build up to the race. So it's like you you doing your thing here. Mm-hmm. It's not just one off, it's everything that goes on in the background and the research and, mm-hmm. and making contact with guys to get them to do the podcast. And yeah, yeah. People will only see what they're seeing in front of them today. Exactly. But there's so much goes on, on behind the scenes. They can't see all this. Yeah, that there, we can there's see. so much <laughs> goes on. That yeah it makes you makes you appreciate like kind of how far you've came and yeah. um kind of keep going back to the same points but that that's that yeah life's all about the same kind of things and and, and feel, feeling good about yourself and and humble and positive and yeah mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah that's very true so we've got um see if there's any other questions or anything coming in. Yeah, people are loving it. We've got hmm. a good few li- live viewers. Cheers. Yeah, so thanks a lot for sharing that. The, uh, the other other thing that you've mentioned as well is that it was actually going to be a question that I, I was thinking about was, so 40% is mindset. Mm. Have you personally done, have you worked on your mindset in terms of like, I, I read books, I go to workshops, I, I learn about that in, in that form, like being like a coach, a mentor, mm. Uh, have you done that for yourself? That's affected your running, or has your running been your your kind of your teacher? It's just all self, kind of self taught stuff. And okay. I, when I'm away a lot, I tend to like I was I was chatting to one of the guys from our training group who's doing London Mark next year, and I was saying to him, when I'm away in training camps, I tend to have a lot of downtime, so I rest up a lot, and when I'm not reading. Um, I tend to go through, try and visualise as much as possible around the marathon. Okay. Um, before I go to a race, I know the pace, I know I know everything about it. I know how that pace should feel. Excuse me, so when it does start to hurt, I visualise that. So when it hurts on race day, you can think, think well, I've been here before. I was here every day of the week in November when I was thinking about this. Mm-hmm. So I know how this feels. I know how to battle through it. Okay. Um, when you pass your markers, your 10k, your half marathon, and I tend to break races down so I, I, I can kind of tend to pass along quicker. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, just, just get really knuckled into what you what you should be thinking about and mm-hmm. yeah, it's all, almost a self-taught Ben and okay. um, as I said to you before, like mentally, mental toughness now is, is something that's stronger than ever um, and I think it'll just keep getting stronger, yeah. yeah. And that can then be taken back to if there's any setbacks or injuries. Mm-hmm. I know how to deal with that and how to yeah. de- how to deal with it myself. My wife doesn't like me when I'm injured, and um, because I'm I must be hard to live with. Because all I want to do is run and I'm right. climbing the walls and if I'm in the gym and cross training, it's mm-hmm. it's not where I want to be. But it's yeah. just what you've got to deal with in, in, mm-hmm. in that that time. And all these things make you make you tougher, mentally tougher for when it comes to comes to the big one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So the from the sounds of it, your is your preparation of uh, actually running, as uh, as well as the visualizing, um, and preparation. Yeah. Is is what's yeah. really. And I train a lot on my own, so I do two sessions a week with my training group. But the other ten, twelve runs I do are at home, okay. so I spend a lot of time on my own. So you, okay. again, you just get there's there's no one to pull you through it. Mm-hmm. Um, you've just got to get it done. Yeah. 
most often my wife comes out on, on a Sunday morning on a bike with me. Okay. Um, but she, she doesn't often, she doesn't tend to talk much because I'm just, I'm f- zoned in and focused to what I'm doing. Right. Um, and yeah, th- these little things all add to, to, the, mm-hmm. to the end goal and, and mm-hmm. the mental toughness that it needs. So. Okay. And if you go into a race, or if you go into a lot of things in life actually, and if you're physically prepared for it, but you're not mentally prepared, and it just won't go the way you want it to go. Yeah. And sometimes you've got to to have that setback to realise where your 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 faults lay. Um, I've run mm-hmm. races and I never and I wasn't prepared for it mentally, and then mentally and physically they're both singing from different hymn sheets, and it's they're both singing different songs. But if they're both singing the same song from the same hymn sheet. And that, that to me just that mm. breeds success. That. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And harmony and line yeah, your, your no, mind and body. Yeah. There's no stopping you there. Yeah. yeah. Um, everything's just on, on on target and on on the path to yeah. success. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, that's that's really interesting. So I, I think uh, well that's has been been chatting for for an hour and Is it really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it flies by, yeah. Yeah. Um but yeah, thanks for everyone who's joined us on Instagram, Facebook and any all the questions that were submitted as well that's really good well i'll uh, say on a, on a side note from that ben if there is any any questions that or anything that any of the viewers want to, to, to ask yep. you then you could just get in touch with you then you can get in touch with me yeah. and, I'll, and i'll try and answer as many as i okay. can yeah because they'll, they'll probably if you leave comments on this video um we'll make sure uh derek uh, hears yeah, yeah, that yeah, and, definitely. And, and we can get back to you there there is one more here if you're up for answering how how does derek get through the mental challenges of a long of a long race again it's just it's trying to try and visualize it as much as possible when when that race is going to start to become tough mm-hmm. for a marathon i it sounds can sound quite silly first mile, first marker for me is to go through the first mile if i've got a target pace okay I'll just say six minutes mm-hmm. i want to go through the first mile as close as six minutes as possible and the next the next goal for me is to get to 10k Get to ten k, okay. Then it's the half marathon. Mm-hmm. Then I then I, I look at getting to sixteen point three miles because they are in on on single figures for a countdown. So mm-hmm. you're nine point nine miles remaining. I then get to twenty miles, and I've got ten k to go. Okay. Um, get to twenty um thirty nine k, thirty seven k. Sorry, you've got the last five k, um, last three miles to run, and then by that point you just you're really just hoping your legs hold up and right. and you've got the got it in the bank. Yeah, and that's the preparation where it comes in. Yeah, yeah, try and break that down as much as possible. As I said, the race starts on a marathon, they say at 20 miles that you can hit the wall between 18 and 20. Um, yeah. Be prepared for that. And if it does happen, then you think, to say, well, I've been here before mm-hmm. numerous times. When I was thinking about it, the way I got through it was I done this and okay. it worked. Yeah. So you just, you just keep going try and break in a mile down so you can break it into quarters or do lamp posts or anything just set have a landmark and aim for that yeah little things like that can can take your mind off of the pain the hurt mm-hmm. similar to listening to music i suppose it if you're listening to music and it, it can take your mind off what's going on with your legs yeah if, if you focus on a landmark or, yeah. or lamp post or anything it, mm-hmm. it can take your mind off it yeah um paula ratcliffe is something i've i've done often as well as in your head count from zero to a hundred Okay. And then back down to zero. Okay. Um, I count really, really slowly, um, so it can take me maybe a mile to mm-hmm. get to, to 50. So you've went to 100, back down to zero, and you've covered three and a half, four miles before you know it. Right. Um, little things like that. Do that on repeat? Yeah. Right, um, okay. Just when it's starting to become tough. Okay. Usually I've, I've done it in a couple of 10Ks. Mm-hmm. You've got to watch because it can take your mind off what you're doing. So okay. You can, you can maybe ease off the accelerator a bit. Okay. Um. So I I tend I, I practice that a few times. Um, was on a treadmill actually because treadmill running I, I I don't really enjoy that. <laughs> so that can be quite monotonous. And then the belt is going at a continuous pace, so it allows you to practice running at that pace, but thinking, mm-hmm. counting in your head. Mm-hmm. Um, sounds silly, but uh, these little things work for for, for different individuals. Yeah. And there's probably lots of other mental things you can do, but um, mm. hope hope that helps. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that was uh, Ian McIntyre. Yeah. Thanks for that question. It's, it's really good, uh, a really good question because it's it's a question I never thought of. Yeah. That I would have asked yeah. as well. If, uh, so I think when, for you, for sorry to interrupt, but for you it's different because 
if you're focusing that, you've also got me here. Right, yeah. Shouting at you or yeah. nipping at you, say, right, right, Ben, come on, keep going. But when you're left here on your own, you, you don't have that, mm-hmm. you don't want to bounce off. Yeah. Um, you've then got to become mentally tougher. Yeah. So, like, as I say, little things like that can, can mm. possibly yeah, help. The, those individual tools that you can use out in the field yeah. on your own. Yeah. 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 And that's, that's a really good tip. And it's just about slicing it up, really. Like, we in, in personal development, uh, I think it was Brian Tracy talked about slice and dice the task. Yeah. So you've got a big, huge task, yeah. such as a marathon, break it up into sections mm-hmm. and, and take this this one mile at a time b- idea. Like the, the in the park run, the how up the back of the park run, when I'm doing that with, with when I'm pacing guys around, I break it into quarters. Okay. So you get to the first bench, that's a quarter. Okay. A big tree, it's halfway. Three quarters, then we're at the top. Okay. But, and I then say the second half is easier than the first half, so they're still running up a hill. <laughs> it's not yeah, easy. Yeah. But you're making it sound easier, so maybe inside they can, yeah, this is feeling easier. Yeah. Um, and you can just keep continuing that pace. Mm-hmm. So little things like that can help. They may not help, yeah. but um, you won't know until you try, really. Yeah. 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 And the one good tip I got from you is uh, I kept on chatting to you mm-hmm. and you kept on telling me to, to be quiet yeah. <laughs> don't, don't talk yeah. Yeah. and don't um, wave to your family <laughs> just focus and concentrate on yeah. what you're doing although you're only putting one foot in front of the other it's, it, it does take a lot of concentration mm-hmm. and if you if you lapse that concentration you can maybe ease off yeah. a bit pace wise mm-hmm. um, but if you're focusing and concentrating on what you're doing and you just keep going through the miles quite quite hard and quite steadily yeah and then, yeah, there's enough time when I mean, you cross the finish line to, to chat and Aye. and to, to wave and yeah. cuddle. So treat it like a sport. Like yeah, that's, yeah, That's yeah. what I've re- learned from you is that you really, it is a real sport yeah. for you and it, it's it's a different mindset from where I've begun when yeah. I started running. And, and it's easy to treat, that. treat running as a, as a hobby because mm-hmm. for most people out there, it is a hobby. Yeah. Um, a lot of club runners run really good times. Even for guys who do like marathons in four, five, six hours, it takes just probably just as much or more effort to do that than it does to run a, a marathon in two and a half hours. What's hard for me can be slower for someone else, but just as hard. Yeah. And, and again, that that's the beauty of running. And, and that's when I say when I'm pacing guys around the park run, if it's 15, 16 minutes or 25 minutes, I, I say the same to them all. There's no point in talking because you're here to run fast. Mm-hmm. You want yeah. to you want to achieve a personal goal. Yeah, we can talk in more enough at the at the end when mm-hmm. we're finished. But you've got twenty five minutes of hard work, so you may as well put as much energy as you can into that. Because if you're talking to me, you're not working hard enough. Yeah, it's as simple as that. True. Yeah. Um, and little little thoughts and process that people don't think of can can make the difference really. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and I, I really appreciate. Yeah, thank all you for having on. It's much appreciated, and I hope I hope everybody that's that's listened in has enjoyed it. Yeah, it, it looks like it. So we've got lots of thank yous. Really love watching this interview. Thanks to you both. Um, so thank you everyone joining, and thanks yeah, for thanks you, again. Thanks for your Cheers. Time. Uh, we're actually away for a four four mile run. Yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah. That, that's why I'm not in a a, a suit or a, my, t- my my shirt today. I'm going out for a run. So um, thanks for everyone to come online and watch this and spend your time in, in a Wednesday. Uh, if you watch this on the replay, please just uh, leave a comment if you've got any questions or um, let us know that you watched it by just putting in hashtag replay if you've watched this live and share it with any running friends or groups that you're in so we can get as many people, th- this video and interview, as much exposure and let other people be inspired yeah. by Derek's story and encourage people to run. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.